You are very lucky that we have been joined with Professor Dr. Yasser Ayaz, Chairman, National Center of Artificial Intelligence. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? Wa alaikum salam It's good to be back here. Likewise, thank you thank so you. much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you over here. You know, so if we are to kind of speak about your awards, I triple E actually awarded you as well. You have the presidential award. You know, you represent us as well. You happen to be the Chairman of National Center of Artificial Intelligence. So first things first, you know, we have gotten the basics of artificial intelligence from you. Let's talk about how, whether, yes or no, AI will improve our lives or not. It certainly will. Like, okay. uh, basically the idea is that any kind of advancement in technology is spurred on by, for example, corporations or investors who are looking to provide some sort of uh, a tool or some sort of a device or any, you know, a medium which can help humans improve their lives. If they don't do that, then it won't send in, sell in the market. True. Of course, AI, like any other technology, can have positive and negative uses and people can develop it either way. Yep. But eventually, like if you look at, for example, the advent of cars or advent of even, for example, weapons, which are meant to... Uh, you know, for, for not uh, a very friendly. good purpose, yeah, yeah, exactly, not a very friendly purpose, but like uh, the usage that we have found in our society and the, the laws that we have found in, you know, regulating them and controlling them have ensured that weapons contribute positively towards maintaining law and order True. and security. So if something like weapons, for example, can be used for a positive impact on the society, AI certainly is something that is, uh, actually AI has been the manifestation of, you know, the human pinnacle, the, uh, because True. Any, anything that we have in science, anything that we invent, anything, uh, this comes from observation. Like for example, how did we get this idea that we need to fly? We observe birds while flying in, you know, the sky, mm. and we thought, you know, why not give it a try, yeah. right? And in, a, in fact, in a lot of initial attempts that we see in old-timer movies, and you know, for example, people trying to wear wings and trying to fly mm. because they're just trying to mimic birds. True. The, mm. And then, in time, they understood the science behind it, the aerodynamics behind it, and then we had not just aero, yeah. uh, you know aeroplanes and aircrafts, but now also spacecrafts, mm. and this has given us a whole new perspective of the world. Similarly, AI, for instance, this is for uh, this is number one. Uh, from purely creator's point of view, any sort of science that we invent is actually trying to mimic something that exists in nature. So human brain, for instance, is something that exists in nature and it can process so much information, it can give us, you know, a variety of conclusions and all that. Well, not all there brains though, not all <laughs> brains. <laughs> yeah, but that's a valid example. Yeah. There is another dimension to it. Like, for example, we see in movies, uh, the artificial intelligence, uh, it's replacing humans, the robots are replacing humans. How do you think or how much do you think it it can be true in the coming future i think it that is AI, true now yeah ai yeah. would uh, evolve like a tool for instance like chat gpt ever since it has surfaced look it is a content producer but has it completely replaced content writers it has actually enabled content writers to produce more comprehensive content <laughs> because for instance you know produce or, or or kind of reproduce i mean you know there's there's still a confusion because imagine that it totally depends on the prompt that i'm going to give to chat gpt and imagine, so, okay, I'll be very honest. You know, I don't know whether I should say it on television or not, how I've been using it. So what happens is that, for example, if there's a subject, and if I am to kind of look for, because earlier what would happen is that I would go to Google Scholar, I would check on Google, I would go on to different articles and collect my data, and then, you know, be like, okay, you know, this is how I need to converse with my guest today. But with ChatGPT, the best part is that if I give it the right prompt, what it will do is, that even if there was some research conducted with every area that I'm looking for in 1960s, 1970s, 80s, or maybe, maybe probably, you know, uh, you know, even in recent times as well, it will give me all of those references and then I can just, you know, with one page, I actually can summarize the entire topic. So it is helpful. But do you think that, you know, at times we will stop using our brain as much as we are using it now? Uh, uh, people said this when calculators were being invented. You know, yeah. we, uh, like people used to count on a Bacchus, you know, and a lot of other devices yep, before yep, it got yep. to calculators. So th whenever technology comes in, uh, this is this kind of things are always there. In fact, for instance, before computers became common, people used to conduct interviews on televisions even before that. They yep. used to read through, new if you l look at, for example, the ESU style debatings, for instance, they used to disallow computers inside the preparation rooms. And, uh, you know, they, they used to have all sorts of, uh, for example, uh, biographies, or you could have encyclopedia, you could have newspapers. Based on that, you could prepare your material. So uh, it's not very long back, people yep. used to think that consulting Google to prepare, for example, uh, you know, the t things that you'll be discussing about on TV or in debates on stage, <coughs> was maybe not very good yeah. but it is a uh, like and okay why chat gpt for instance and why does it make it things easier because the future of internet actually is going towards a direction where we'll be communi communicating with computers and machines in a more human like way
Wow. So, for instance, like even with Google, all the data that ChatGPT provides to you was available on the internet. Yep. And giving the right keywords, you could still, you know, come upon that data, True. but it would take you more time. True. ChatGPT has just made it easier in, in one sense that, for instance, if you give the right prompt or you give two or three different prompts, you converse with it like you would converse with another human. So this has made the learning experience easier. Yeah. Now the bad part is that in case of Google, for example, when you used to click, for example, in search engine, you used to click on something and it used to give you a page and you could refer that this information comes from this page. Yep. ChatGPT, for every single line that it writes, it won't give you a reference. It will give you the major references which contributed to that article, but it will, for every line, it will not give you a major reference. Yeah. What people have started doing, some people have started doing, is that sometimes they would paraphrase, for example, a research. Somebody else has done a research, they'll put that research into ChatGPT, they'll yep. paraphrase it, and they'll try. And right now, tools are already beginning to become available. For example, Turnitin, a prominent, prominent tool that we use in the academic communities, now it has a version which checks whether text is AI generated or not. Okay. Right. So, like AI so is we have the progressing in both ways, well. of course. Exactly. But while we are at it, you know, let let's speak about this. I think that's what people might be scared of. You know, imagine. Do you think that there will be a time that AI will have autonomy, and AI could actually do whatever AI feels like? Do you think that there will be times of, of such sort as well? The most modern models with, with human and AI, sh you know, sharing of control. Aruna. There are several different models okay. for that. So, but like most of these models, especially for critical tasks, require AI to have, uh, you know, uh, like at least the human to have a thumb on the trigger button. Yeah. But in many cases, for ex for instance, we see the self-driving cars going around. And I don't know if you've seen it or not, there has been a video running around on social media where, you know, a Tesla, which is self-driven, actually saves the life of a human because he just yeah. suddenly falls onto the road and the car, you know, circumvents him exactly. and actually bumps into another car. So in real time, it evaluates which risk is more. Yeah. Should it bump into the other car? Should it bump into the human? So the question is, do humans not have accidents on the road? Do mm -hmm. people not die on the road because of human drivers? Do we, we do. forbid mm -hmm. humans to drive because of that? Yep. So That's is true. AI safer or unsafe compared to that? So this Since means, mm. yeah. So this means by far that you know that the quality of life is actually going to increase. You know, the life expect expectancy is going to get better. So okay, you know, since if we are talking about accidents now, let's get into medicine. Now, do you think that AI will be able to actually let us know two years prior to whatever we are eating that, hey, you know what, your cholesterol will be up in 2026 or probably you will have heart issues in 2027 or things like that. Do you think that that technology will actually help us be better and be healthier? Actually, this is already happening. Okay. There was a, a very famous, actually, a result which people could not immediately explain, but it was, it's been making rounds around social media, and this was that a case of breast cancer, where, you know, AI had actually predicted that a certain case is a case of breast cancer, and there wasn't even a tumor in mm. the, uh, you know, uh, in the, the ultrasound case. and in the mammogram mm. that, uh, you know, that, uh, which was there, which was shown in the picture. There, wa there was nothing actually there. And people thought this is a false positive. They actually put this aside. Four years later, exactly on that same spot, breast cancer surfaces. Mm -hmm. And this was a study, the, the algorithm was made by Stanford. And this made rounds on social media that, you know, oh. AI is observing mm. something. Uh, in 90s, there was a research, for instance, by a researcher called Tom Mitchell in Carnegie Mellon University. He's a author of the famous book on machine learning and head of the machine learning department. So he did a research on emergency C-sections. And in the hospital where from which he got the data, 7% of the total people coming in, the total ladies coming in, they Perhaps. were requiring the uh, emergency C-section at the end of the pregnancy. All right. So analyzing more than 400, I think, variables, hundreds mm. of variables across, you know, through mm. the nine months, he was able to predict which people, for instance, because uh, when you ask the doctors, they tell you several different parameters. For example, mm. fetal position, fetal distress. There are several factors that contribute to it. Mm. But which factor contributes more? Which factor contributes less? Yeah. You know, because this is based on doctor's observation. And every mm. doctor has a limited experience of how many patients they've dealt with. Coming to AI, AI gathers data of so many, you know, patients dealt with by so many doctors across so many regions and it tries, so medicine essentially, why, for example, the doctor who practices more is likely to have seen more cases. Yep. But AI would have seen so many more cases compared to any single doctor. Mm. But would it erase the doctor? Would it remove the necessity no, for a doctor? So. Yeah. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Mm, if you talk about social media, we uh, are seeing AI generated images, we are seeing videos generated by AI as well. 
do you think for a layman it's going to be easy to uh, to tell that okay this is an AI generated thing because you know li like a lot of people in our society they are not that technologically advanced they do not know that much about the technology so for a person who is just uh, surfing the social media who's just browsing the internet how is that going to be for that person? And in addition to this, you know, mm. just, I don't know, I, a few days ago I heard this news and it said that, you know, for whatever pictures of yours exist, AI can actually locate them and get them to you. <laughs> now imagine, I don't want all my pictures <laughs> to be seen by the people. It can be dangerous too, right? Yeah, actually, for example, Facebook, when this came into the market, Facebook is a book of faces. Yeah. It's meant for, for example, if you, if you share your pictures with friends, for example, you have some old pictures, you share them around, and you tag your face in it. So if the if Facebook algorithm spots your face in another picture which you hadn't seen it somewhere on Facebook, yeah. it will find it for you. True. So if it is there on any digital media, and the face recognition algorithm is working on it, then it's bound to find it. But isn't it good for you that I mean, you, you cannot you really hide. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we really want Some to pictures hide. that we have hidden already. You know how <laughs> how oh, bachpan ki ek photo hamesha jangiye ke bagair jo maabap ne kichhi oh that. God. Not want this that actually reminds me about something. There was this one picture of mine, and I really never want to see that ever again. One day, my father showed yeah. me that picture. He's like, uh, "Bete, do you do you know who this person is?" He's like joking around. He's yeah. just kidding around, and I'm no. like. Uh, everybody, please come. This is a, a bus picture, and please have a look at it because I never wanted. So your father's been in just like an AI operator you know, at home as well. But sir, there's there's more concern to it, you know. So I got this information out so that I can share. AI generated information is expanding at a sprint. The AI text generator market is predicted to expand, compound annual growth rate at of 49 percent between 2023 and 28. Now, you know, I'm just you know making sure that it's precise. That predicted wave of content is prompting concerns, including regarding the quality and reliability of AI-generated content and activity. Your take on this? Yeah. So uh, it is true that sometimes, for example, uh, the ChatGPT and other large language models also hallucinate. You must understand that this is this is a this is a mm. new uh, you know technology that is you know just. Surfacing. So is it like a bug in in the algorithm? Uh, you know, even for example, in the most you know r refined algorithms for self-driving or medicine or something, they will tell you that the algorithm is 94% accurate or 97% yeah, yeah, yeah. accurate. And As it can never be 100% accurate. Uh, it can be given, for because example, it's updating in, every day. in some in some for, for in uh, in one case, for instance, in one case of one medical use case, for instance, we trained it on some of the data, and so far the data that we have received from local hospitals, it is 100% accurate. But that's probably because we haven't tested it on as much data as we need to, as we diversify data and we get more results, it's very unlikely that it will remain 100% accurate. But then, for example, if it's not 100% accurate, then why do we need AI? Then why use AI? Why not go for some other technology that is 100% accurate? Mm. This brings us to the question of probability, if no. people understand what probability is. Yep. You see, the thing is that if you can make an empirical model, an analytical model of anything, for example, Newton's law of motion, right? Y you know already, for example, that what if there is a certain acceleration or deceleration in an initial velocity, then what will the final velocity True. be? True. There is no sense in applying any probabilistic model like artificial intelligence to this kind of thing, right? Mm. But if, for instance, you are dealing with something f about which you don't know any facts. Yeah. So instead of, for example, just making guesses or, you know, with limited information trying to guess what will likely happen or something like that, AI is a much more formidable tool which gives you a much better probabilistic idea yeah. about... But it's still probabilistic. Hmm. It is, of yes. course. When we talk about hallucinations, <laughs> is there any way that AI can be sometimes indecisive? Uh, I think that in AI, Just like the utility-based yeah. agents, there are mm. like there are four different kinds of agents. Uh, utility-based agents are designed for the fact when you know a, a definite decision is not there. For mm. instance, if a car is driving on the road and an accident is inevitable, mm. right? Yep. So how to minimize the damage, for instance? Yeah. There is no absolute right answer for it either to bump into a human or to bump into a wall, this kind of circumstances can befall a human as well. But I will let the machine decide better, man. I'll be like, okay, you know, I think you decide because you've got it as well. That's but while human preference, of course. Yeah, but while we're at it, two last questions says very quickly, and that is that obviously in today's time, you know, there's, there's cameras everywhere, there's data being collected, there's sensors being put in place as well, there's human behavior under observation, and that too, chat GPT is doing that, you know, or probably artificial intelligence engines are doing that as well. Do you think that in days to come, just like I asked you about, you know, whether to give autonomy to AI and what it can do, do you think it can actually have human conscience to itself, you know, probably because the way that it's going on, and it might, because, you know, imagine that the kind of prompts that we are giving to chat GPT as well, it will save those prompts as well and be like, hey, you know what, last time you asked me this, I think you're going to ask me this again, so here's your answer. 
if you look at the traditional Turing test, for instance, which was coined in the 1940s, 1945, I think, by Alan Turing. So uh, it is meant that, for example, when you converse with an AI, you should feel like you're conversing with a human. Okay. So essentially, if it does not show any kind of empathy, then you would know after you know a bit of chat that you know this is not a human that you're talking to. Yeah. So a bit of empathy has to somehow be created, but how will it be created? There are several actually psychological models that yeah. you, uh, with which you can, for example, you know, map different emotions. And even in our lab, we have some research in which robots can you know express emotions or can try to understand the emotions that yeah. some person is feeling by face recognition, for example, by the move. In fact, one of the best paper awards that we got in London in 2008 was actually about, for example, with the hand movement, with the movement of fingers, can you guess, for example, what underlying emotion is there, which is, you know, attempted to be, you know, conveyed by that movement of the hand. Yeah. So, and also another question that you asked earlier that, for example, will a layman be able to tell about the defects? So just by looking at the picture, if okay. it is intended to cause a confusion, there are tools that are good enough with which you will not be able to tell just by looking at it. But there are computer tools yeah. that can examine them and that can tell that this is a deep fake and it's not a real. But, but these days, you know, those videos from America's Got Talent, obviously people need to understand that it's an AI generated art as well. Very quickly. Some of these videos were forwarded to us. We passed them through one of our tools and we can tell. Yeah if they are artificial or real. Because I posted yeah. one video and then there was this guy who actually texted me on my Instagram, sir, you know you're posting AI generated art. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I didn't knew that it existed. But very quickly, sir, towards the end, one last question, that is that uh, certainly I would want you to touch upon generative AI. And number two, can do you think artificial intelligence in days to come, just say, we say that we are a relationship, can actually find you a compatible partner? Already, I think Umar Saif Saif is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Dil Karishta. <laughs> Dil Karishta is already doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's using basically, you see, the thing is that uh, Right now, for example, when parents go to find a rishta, for instance, so it is their, uh, you know, like uh, experience and everything that they have uh, known so far in the world. Yeah. But for instance, statistically, if you look at, for example, if you make such kind of match, yep. does it eventually, uh, you know, result in a good relationship or not? Does it? Uh, but I think that we would have a lot less data available to us mm. because many people would not answer about the relationships truthfully or they would not be willing to take surveys about uh, something that private. Uh, I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, we have seen, we have been seeing this in movies because you asked about the Dilka Rishta, so actually it rang some bells. Uh, can an AI generate, if we can, uh, can, uh, can a robot actually replace uh, your spouse? Yeah, yeah, are both because we, 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 yeah. Have, we, we have, we have seen that, that yeah. in movies, ahead, so I really want to, I really because want to Because, like, you know, uh, whether we feel good about something or feel bad about something in the moment depends upon the dopamine for example, which actually we have being released in our body at that time. This is that chemical that gives us that feeling. So if we want to experience a certain feeling at a certain time, for instance, uh, we go to uh, the Madame Tussaud uh, museums, for instance, yeah. to take pictures with celebrities. We know that they are not real celebrities. True. But standing next to them and getting a picture, we know it's not a real picture, but somehow it gives us a kick, true, true, right? True. So sometimes, for some cir brief circumstances, it might give you happiness, but mm. I don't think that an entirely AI partner could yeah. give you a lasting happiness. Well, I don't oh. think so. so what Professor Saab is actually trying to say is that you cannot replace a human with AI, okay? Oh. You know, people need to understand that. That's, that's, not, uh, that's not the purpose of AI. is meant to be a tool that helps yes. humans in various things. And getting it's better. It's not meant to replace humans at all. And getting better at life. And obviously, sure. you know, yeah. you know. And uh, you cannot have an AI uh, co-answer. Exactly. And, and person like Professor Dr. Yasser Ayas Saab, you happen to be the Chairman of National Center of Artificial Intelligence, can never go against it as well. But thank you so much, sir, <laughs> for being with us. Lovely to be in conversation with you. For everybody who's thank out you. there, ladies and gentlemen, inshallah, we'll continue it tomorrow as well.